Hello, my name's Mel, welcome to my world, and for those of you that are new to my channel, it's all about self-built DIY camper vans and camper van related stuff. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now today is Wednesday, so it's Waffle on a Wednesday. This is where I answer some questions that have been put to me during the course of the week. So if you've got any questions for me, then please do feel free to leave them in the comments section of this video. And maybe next week I will answer those questions or even demonstrate an answer to those questions. After all, some questions require more of a, a demonstration than a verbal explanation, if that makes sense. <laughs> right, so today, today's question of the week I would say is all about my solar panel. I've been inundated with questions and comments about this little tiny solar panel. Who would have thought that such a tiny panel would have caused, caused such a fuss? Um, before I get on to the questions let's talk about the comments because a lot of people have commented about this solar panel saying that if I use this solar panel they're worried that I'm going to destroy my engine battery because there's no controller because if you use a solar panel without a solar controller it over overcharges the battery and pretty much destroys your battery but please all of those that people that have commented and made that comment and shown that concern as much as I do appreciate your care and concern please don't worry because unlike me this solar panel has got built-in self-control <laughs> What I mean by that is, it's what it's designed for. It is designed to maintain the health of my engine battery by just slowly trickle charging it. Um, because if you park a vehicle up over a long period of time, things like the clock, the alarm, it all drains power from your battery and eventually your battery will go flat. But this is, my, is designed to maintain the health of your battery by just giving it just enough to maintain your clocks, your alarm and all that good stuff keep it all ticking over and stopping your battery from going flat. It is not designed to charge a flat battery. It's designed just to maintain a healthy battery and keep it healthy whilst your car is parked up over a period of time. Now talking about being parked up over a period of time, when I made that video I didn't realise or I didn't think about the current situation that a lot of people have got their cars and vans parked up because of lockdown. And I never realised how many people had never even heard of these solar panels, let alone uh, shown any concern about them. And what I'll do, I'll leave a link in the description of this video to where you can buy a more modern version of this and uh, maintain the health of your battery during these difficult times. And they are relatively cheap, a lot cheaper than buying a new battery. So sticking with the solar panel, Ashley Mears has asked me, among other people, quite a few people have asked a similar question. Hi Mel, just curious, what was the battery voltage measuring before you connected the solar panel? And a lot of other people have also asked what the difference is. What the difference in the voltage is with the, with the uh, solar panel connected to the battery and disconnected. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little demonstration. I shall demonstrate what this solar panel puts out by measuring the voltage of the battery before I connect it. And then I'll measure the voltage of the battery once it's been connected. And in between, I'll measure the voltage of what the solar panel is actually putting out as well. And that way you can see for yourself that it is actually controlling the voltage. Once it's connected to the battery, the voltage will drop and it will demonstrate exactly how controlling these panels are. So now I'm in the front of the van, the solar panel's on the dashboard. I'll demonstrate how much power it's putting out or how much power it's generating. It's actually producing so much that I've got to change that. 21.4 volts. So that's unplugged. It's not plugged into anything. That's what the solar panel is producing. 21.4, 21.5 volts coming through this. All right, now you think if I plug this into my 12 volt battery, it's all going to go horribly wrong. I won't plug it in just yet. Let's measure the voltage of the battery as it sits before I plug it in. Before the lawnmower man comes back. <laughs> right. So my battery reading, I think I've got all my interior lights off. Yeah, and there's no interior lights on, but the door is open. Let's get this on a more accurate reading. There we go. So my battery is reading 11.745. It's fluctuating. I think I'll really push that in a bit better. There you go. 11.75 volts. 
that's just standing still without the solar controller being plugged in. So now I'll plug the solar controller in and we can see what difference it makes. So the difference is 11.76. So there you go, it just goes to show that the solar panel has got a built-in controller because it's not putting the full 20 or 20 odd volts, whatever it was, into the battery. It's dropped it down to 11.76, so it's quite safe. I've got nothing to worry about. It's not going to destroy my battery. Like I said earlier, it is designed to maintain the health of the battery. It's not designed to charge it up. It's just there to maintain the health of the battery so that if I park up for a long period of time, when I come back, I know my battery is going to be in tip-top condition. Now, whilst I'm here with my battery lid exposed like this, I want to share a comment with you that Irish Rover pointed out. He had trouble with his battery and he couldn't get to his battery because of these bolts had seized up and he had to drill all four of these out to get to his battery. So I suggest if you've got a battery tray like this in your van, whether it be a Mercedes, a Crafter or a Vauxhall, put a little bit of lubricant on these bolts. Look how rusty these get. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of copper slip on these bolts before I put this all back together. So thank you Irish Rover for sharing that tip with us. Make sure you lubricate these little bolts. Um, because the last thing you want to do is be stuck somewhere and you can't get to your battery because these have seized in. So yeah, cheers Irish Rover. I want to get on and do that right now. So the next question is from Fork in the Road Bex. Now Fork in the Road Bex, or Bex as I like to call her, because <laughs> that's her name. She's converting a van into a camper. She's taken out her double seat and put a single seat in. Now the question is, what do I do with the yellow wire? Where does it plug? The simple answer to that is, there is nowhere to plug that yellow wire because now you've got a single passenger seat in your van, you will no longer have a centre seat belt. And that yellow wire goes to the pretensioner on the centre seat belt. So that yellow wire has got nowhere to go. The only thing is you're going to now have an airbag light on when you turn your ignition on because that yellow wire isn't attached to anything. Your onboard computer in your van is going to think there's a fault with your pretensioner. So uh, you need to trick the computer into thinking your pretensioner is still there. And there's two ways you can do this. Um, the real simple way is to buy a little diode that plugs into that yellow wire sending a signal to your computer making your van think that the pretensioner is still there the other thing you can do is to take the pretensioner out of the seat plug it in and tuck it in underneath your um, single seat probably not ideal but it will still have the same effect it will still stop your airbag light coming on good luck with that <laughs> that's forking the road bex check out her channel she is building a van all on her own bless her very brave and uh, yeah, go check out her channel, show her some support. Okay, so now we're back in the van, time for some toilet humour. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not that bad. James Phoenix asks, or comments, Mel, love the simplicity of your toilet, but what if you need to do a number two? Laugh out loud. I think what James means is, what he's referring to is my little pee pipe down here. I've got a little pee funnel there self-explanatory but James is wondering what if I want to do something a bit more substantial well the answer to that is James it's quite simple I do have a portaloo not that I've used it yet <laughs> hopefully I'll never have to use it nasty business nasty business but there you go James I do actually have a little toilet tucked under my bench and I've got my little pee funnel for the middle of the night. So Amber Outdoor Smith has asked me, is it okay to glue the battens to the side of the van? Personally, I wouldn't glue the battens to the van. I would screw them as well as glue them if you, if you really want to use glue. Because the van vibrates so much when you're driving it, the best glue in the world could easily foul under those conditions. So I wouldn't want to do that. And because once you've put your battens on the wall, then you put your walls against the battens, then you're going to have cupboards as well pictures all sorts of things that so needs to be quite weight bearing so i wouldn't want to rely purely on glue and uh yeah once you've done your battens put a vapor barrier over the top of that and then build the rest of your van 
Hope that helps, mate. Now, I've saved the best question, suggestion, until last, and that comes from Annalise of Intuitive Tarot. Annalise has just become a member of my channel, so thank you, Annalise. I really do appreciate your encouragement and your support. And in return, please do go check out Annalise's channel, Intuitive Tarot. It's fascinating what she does over there, so yeah, please do go check her out. Now, Annalise, about a month ago, got in touch with me to warn me of the dangers of using an aluminium coffee pot she was really concerned that it would damage my brain <laughs> any more than it already is because <laughs> aluminium apparently can bring on alzheimer's in old when you get old so she suggested i get rid of the aluminium coffee pot and buy myself a stainless steel one as she just asked recently very recently if i'd done that already and the truth be told is i haven't actually got rid of the coffee pot as you can see it's still there i've kept it there for purely decorative purposes i've not used it since annalise warned me but i have ordered a new coffee pot and i've got it right here <laughs> now i didn't read the listing properly on ebay i just went by the pictures i saw the picture and i thought oh that'll do looks more like a kettle than a coffee pot um <laughs> this is what i ended up with now it's not quite as big as it looked in the picture so lesson learned always read the description <laughs> not just go by the pictures because that ain't really worth a well i couldn't even make a cup of tea with that so there you go hopefully annalise that answers that question and thank you again for your suggestion now if you enjoyed this video if you found it mildly entertaining or even informative please do give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please do consider subscribing and by subscribing to my channel you help me save the local wildlife because i've got two cats and they're both hungry and you'll help feed them thank you for watching ta la for now and because you haven't got a seat sent sent <laughs>